Bionic Dance is filmed in front of a live studio audience. I love that Chris Brown started our miracle series by talking about Jesus' very first miracle, which was turning water into wine. And I'm also going to talk about Jesus' first miracle, but it has nothing to do with wine. It has nothing to do with a wedding. It has everything to do with you and why you're sitting here today and how you're even able to watch this. I'm not sure I am able to watch this. It's quite painful. She just took 21 seconds to say what could have taken less than five. Today we're talking about the miracle of life. I script my vids for a reason, people, so my videos don't sound like a 10 minute setup for a dad joke punchline. You know the kind of thing I mean. I'm gonna do my best, dear viewers, to trim down what's being said by the living human embodiment of preamble so that this experience is, for you, significantly less painful than it will be for me. Let's do this. <laughs> Greetings fellow space travelers, Bionic Dance here. Today we're looking at some chick from some religious channel that's gotten too big for its britches. You've seen the sort before. Production values like a TV show, but less than 10,000 subscribers. One of those. She's gonna try to talk to us about the origin of life while getting biology so badly incorrect that it makes Star Trek writers look like Watson and Crick. Oh, don't give me that look, Trekkies. You know they've never portrayed evolution accurately on the show. Jesus turning water into wine may have been Jesus' first miracle recorded in the Gospels, Jesus in the flesh physically doing this miracle, but there is another miracle um, that goes a little bit further back. And I want you to listen really carefully to 1 Corinthians 6, 8. And that's the sort of thing I'll be cutting out from here on. Because she just spent 17 seconds telling us what we would not be talking about, which means she's either really bad at this or she's trying to pad the runtime. So why do you exist? So I guess we could point to basic human biology, right? Well, not just human biology. Last I checked, my kitties are biological organisms too. Oh, who's the little kitty? Oh. Yes, I have a gooey side. Fuck off. Now, I don't know where Bimbarella the Christian here stands on evolution, but you know that humans weren't always around, right? I mean, I'm not a biologist, but even I know that one. Well, what even is life? A magazine, a board game, a breakfast cereal. And the concept of life is super mysterious and super complex. And probably the hardest thing to explain about it is its origin. It is remarkably difficult to explain something nobody knows. And when you describe life as super mysterious and super complex, the dumb blonde jokes just write themselves. Crank a book other than the Bible, girl. In 1859, Louis Pasteur, he disproved something called spontaneous generation. And this is something she's going to get rather wrong. So let me briefly describe the idea behind spontaneous generation, which she really doesn't cover in any kind of detail. Back in the day, people didn't have microscopes, and they thought that fleas could arise from non-living dust, while maggots could form from rotting meat. Magically! Louis showed it ain't true, you just can't see the eggs because they're too small. I mean, that's the big print, easy reader, Cliff's Notes version of spontaneous generation, but she doesn't even do that much. What he basically proved is that life cannot spont spontaneously generate, meaning um, a microbe has to come from a parent microbe. When a mommy microbe and a daddy microbe love each other very much, they have a baby microbe. Or mitosis when cells split apart into two. For example, lots of options for reproducing besides doing the horizontal mambo. I honestly can't tell whether she's laughing at her own joke, laughing because the joke is stupid but someone else made her say it, or laughing because she's in over her head and quite nervous. What I do know is I have no charitable interpretation of that laughter. Bottom line, that life only comes from pre-existing life. Meaning life has only been observed coming from pre-existing life. And it's not even true anymore. Scientists are doing this kind of thing in the lab all the time now. Life can definitely come from non-life. That much we know. Life does not come out of nothing. In other words, if you try to take God out of this equation, it, it's like saying, let's try to make zero plus zero equal one. That's a bit of a leap. Even if it was a magical event that jump-started life, nothing says it had to have been the work of a God, yours or any other. And it's like, but wait, 
then where did the original life come from? And I think you're starting to see the problem. The problem is that some people are impatient and want answers now and don't give a damn whether those answers are right, wrong, plausible, implausible, provable, unprovable, or anything else other than viscerally satisfying. Much like the people who didn't have microscopes and couldn't see maggot eggs and thus thought up spontaneous generation, so too are these religious types unable to see the origin of life and thus thought up God as their explanation. And this is chronic with God-botherers, this attitude of a wrong answer is better than no answer. And I mean, I get it. The real world isn't nearly as nifty as it ought to be. Science ain't a damn thing like science fiction. I'm an artist because spaceships are fun and blackboards are boring. So I get it. But I'm not going to engage in that kind of behavior to my own detriment. These folks will. And they have since forever and a half. And listen to this. Um, this is Genesis 1.1. It says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, which you're probably very familiar with that phrase. Hey guys, put down that test tube and listen to me. No need to look any further. Some crusty old book from thousands of years ago, before we had microscopes, has all the answers. We can create, but only out of existing life. Even human reproduction, it's life borrowing from life. We can't create something out of absolutely nothing. Which means that life is never created through reproduction. It only continues in a unique and separate form. Or, to put it another way, life doesn't begin at conception or in the womb. I don't know this chick's stance on birth control, but I don't ever want to hear that phrase come out of a so-called pro-lifer's face again. Life begins at conception? My butt began at conception. Life began 3.5 billion years ago and is still going strong even in the face of some pretty nasty challenges like ice ages and crap. And to take it one step further, um, Newton's law of inertia, the first law of motion, right? He says this, he says that a body at rest will stay at rest until uh, impacted by an outside source, right? Wrong. The first law of motion states that an object will remain at rest or in motion in a straight line unless acted upon by an outside force. Or, to put it another way, everything in the universe is compelled by the very nature of the universe to maintain its present state, and inevitably fails because outside forces are everywhere, thus forcing matter and energy to change its present state. It's a very simple concept, and even someone who has only played a video game that represents space travel even slightly similarly to real life can tell you that this law is a giant bitch in zero gravity and far less inertia than one is used to. So this presents another problem for the origin of life. Science is making it really hard. Math is making it really hard to take God out of this equation because life is movement. It'd be more accurate to say that movement is a byproduct of life, really. Even if you are sitting perfectly still right now, there's um, oxygen being exchanged, there's cells regenerating, there's food being converted into energy, there's lungs breathing, there's hearts beating. I'll be one of the first to say that I don't grok humans very well, but I was told that they have only one heart, just like me. And what causes all of this movement, huh? It doesn't just happen because life. Something is making those organs do it. Electrochemical processes are making those organs pump and squirt and fume. That's all life is. Functionality. Like a machine, except the off switch is kind of permanent. And the one bit of programming code in that splat of gray matter sloshing about inside that well-armored orb atop your neck, which attempts to override all others, is to go out and fuck. A lot. Perpetuate the species at all costs, the head meets shout, for if they did not, the romantic comedy industry would be forever lost to humanity. When you're walking around in nature, you hear the birds and the bugs all chirping. And what you're really hearing is a bunch of animals shouting, I'm horny! Do me! I'm horny! Do me! That's what life is, a long quest to get some before you die. And yet, it's this, the loudest and arguably most important drive of all life, not just humans, which religion most seeks to restrict, curtail, and shame, which, to anybody outside the religion, smells really fishy. And this is the law of inertia. Well, where did this movement come from? Because if movement comes from other movement, just the way that life comes from other life, we're in another problem. Well, I'm glad you said if. Because movement doesn't come from other movement. It comes from forces acting upon inert matter. 
or matter currently moving, or even each other. You ever build one of those paper mache volcanoes? You put vinegar and baking soda together inside it to make the most cliched and stinky school project ever. And that's up against dissecting frogs, so you know it's pretty bad. Well, what made that happen, that eruption of stenchy bubbles? Chemicals encountering and reacting to each other, producing various new effects. Just like life, only less complicated. When the Earth orbits the Sun, it's not reacting to movement, but to the Sun's gravity, which is creating movement through the force the Sun generates. Movement is a byproduct of the interaction of spheres and forces. And not just spheres, but that's usually how a hypothetical object reacting to a force is portrayed when people study these kind of things. The motion of a sphere in a vacuum and zero gravity is often the beginning model for the study of the interaction between forces and objects because of the uniformity of the shape and its environment. Without introducing an outside force, nothing will be going anywhere, and when it does, its movement will not be changed by its own shape. So movement is the byproduct of forces and objects interacting with each other. And life is the byproduct of biological processes. You might even say that life is a verb, that living is what your body does. Who lit the match? It's God's movement that this first divine act to um, spur on the movement and then God spoke, let there be light, God moved, God spoke. And when you hear this phrase now, the miracle of life, when you look at it through the lens of science, math, and scripture, you can't help but see a miracle because the fact that you can take a breath defies all laws of nature. You say fucking what when? First of all, there are no laws of nature. That's not a thing. Or rather, it's not a thing outside of philosophy. There are no laws of nature in boots on the ground science. There are scientific laws which describe the topics she obviously thinks are covered by this term laws of nature, but they're not called that, and while it may seem pedantic to make this distinction, because it is, it's also important to do it. Christians love to take advantage of sloppy language. You see it all the time if you're paying attention. Don't even get me started on the crap they like to pull with the word theory. And not being specific about whether we're talking scientific law or the so-called laws of nature opens the door for them to start equating things that have nothing in common. And second, Breathing defies scientific law? Breathing. Really. She doesn't say how. She doesn't say why. In fact, her video is basically over. There's 12 seconds left that I'm not gonna show you because she doesn't say anything new. And I'm sure there are some better biologists out there than I who are currently gnashing their teeth as they furiously type in the comments section the reasons why breathing is more than adequately explained by science. In a way, I kind of feel sorry for her. Just from her mannerisms, I don't think she wanted to do this. I don't think she wanted to be on camera. She's acting like someone said, Hey Kristen, you're the kind of pretty people respond to. Go put on a dress and talk to folks who aren't here for just under six minutes. Maybe I'm reading her wrong, but that's the vibe I get. But that's hardly important. Far more pressing is that I have two long overdue thank yous for my Amazon wishlist, and I'm not opening those on camera anymore because people send me stuff that can get my channel in trouble and I don't need any more surprises. 2020's been bad enough already. Right, so here's first into the Ed Basket today, eh? No idea why I did that with an accent, it's just what was in my heart at the moment. What we have is a collection of 50 plus Sega Genesis games ported over to the Nintendo Switch. It's pretty cool, you know, I mean, I'm an 80s kid, I was uh, raised on, well, actually Atari and television and then finally NES, so obviously I'm an old school gamer, and, uh, you know, so having a bunch of stuff from my childhood is pretty cool. And this wonderful bit of nostalgiagasm comes to me about a month, month and a half ago, I really should start making videos more often again, from Rix. That's R-I-X Rix. So thank you for that. I, I definitely appreciate it. Hey, are you like me in that when you say thank you for something, it doesn't matter how genuinely you feel gratitude, you kind of feel like when you said it, you projected dishonesty, like you're just going through the motions? I don't know how to say a thank you, no matter how sincere, that sounds sincere, at least in my own ears. And next, but by no means least, in fact you have no idea which one I value more because I'm doing them in the order they were received, is a Firefly keychain. It looks just like Serenity, the 
spaceship, the Firefly bulk transport, yeah, from the TV show and the rather unfortunate movie, No, I Didn't Like Serenity, and not just because they killed off my favorite character. But regardless, this comes to me from Mama Atheist. If you don't know Mama Atheist, you're missing out. She's really good people. Go check her. Uh, and I'm not entirely certain why she sent it to me, but I have a vague notion or two. But either way, I'm definitely grateful to have both this and, well, to know her. So again, thank you. And if any of the rest of wants to send me something, there's links down in the groin bar for both my Amazon wishlist and PayPal for direct donations, but in no way feel obligated, and let's face it, it's a pandemic. If you're spending money on me, you better be frickin' rich, because, well, take care of your own first, you know? I don't need presents if it's going to be to your family's detriment. Anyway, until next time, fellow space travelers, this is Bionic Dance saying don't run on automatic. Instead, please, think. When you're rock, rocking around, rocking around, walking around in nature, I'm gonna do my best, dear viewers, to trim down what's being said by the living hu- Because movement doesn't come from other movement, it comes from forces acting upon- uh. Even YouTubers need Ferraris. Please donate on Patreon. Every time you rate, an angel loses its wings.